Hey everybody, it's Jenny and I am back today to share with you how I planned in my Storyline Chapters Memory Planner using the Coco Daisy Wayfarer kits. I started out by using the, I wanted to use the specific colors of like aqua, navy, and red. And so that's really what sort of formed the layout of the week. I went ahead and used these number stickers that are included. I think these are from the planner kit. I'd have to look to be 100% sure, but I used these because they stuck to that color palette that I wanted to use. Now, there are other colors included in the Wayfarer collection, of course. They're not monochromatic, but I tried to just stick to those basic hues when using anything really specific or like choosing an ink for stamping, those types of things. I'm simply cutting out my photos from that I printed on my Canon Selfie printer. I used the Pick Frame app to create the collage, and then I just use my photo or my trimmer to cut them down. They end up being approximately one and a half by two, but again, they're a little bit smaller because of the white space and the collage. And then also because they are four by six prints and so they are not, or digital prints, so they're not true four by six. So that does make a little bit of a difference. So now I'm just gonna place them in the general area that I want them. So it won't be like hard and fast. It's just, oh yeah, I think I might like this right here. This would probably work, that type of thing. So that's where we're at with placement of the photos. I do like to try to keep them on the day that they happened. That works, that just really works for me. Obviously everybody has their own way of doing things and what's comfortable. I think some people are probably a little bit more militant about their perspective just because I'm pretty flexible and pretty laid back. Now I am selecting some pocket cards to use. I know it's crazy. Well, okay, maybe it's not crazy, but it's a little bit unusual as I don't usually use a ton of pocket cards, but I really wanted to do a couple of flip outs this week because as you can see, I have lots and lots of photos. And then I also had some journaling I wanted to make sure I got in as well. And so having the little tip outs really flip outs, tip outs, tip ins, whatever you want to call them, really made a huge difference in terms of space. So that was why I included those. I'm going to tell you right now, spoiler alert, I wish I hadn't used two. One would have done the job and I would have liked one a lot better, like how it looked in the end. But as usual, I am not going to get worked up about that because it's just one week and it does look fine. Now I'm sorting through the die cuts that are included in this collection and I'm trying to find travel themed ones that are not super specific. So it's not like, I, I want them to work with the overall layout and I just want them to be very generic because I want to stick to the color palette and I want them to not say Cairo or whatever the case may be. I just want them to be fun and travel-y. So I'm going to start, I'm gonna create a cluster up here in the top on that card with the stripes. So before I do that though, I'm going to just add this one little label that has the phrase on it and it's so cute and it goes perfectly with the photo of my son driving. All right, so now we're creating this cluster. I'm just gonna do my typical layering the things the way that I feel like they look the best. I wanted to include the vellum because I love the texture of vellum. I'm not, I don't feel like, oh, I have to have it. It's, you know, I I'm, gotta use it all the time. Not at all, but I do love it when I do use it. I just think it really adds something super fun to a layout and I'm always reminded of that. All right, so now I'm going to use clear scotch tape to adhere the pocket card to the page. That will be after I write down all the restaurants that we ate at throughout the week. Now, remember, 
I traveled with my 14 year old son before you judge the restaurants we ate at. He's a 14 year old boy. 14 year old boys often have very specific tastes and this trip was about him. So with that being said, no five star or Michelin rated restaurants on my list. Now, we did have some good food though, by the way. All right, so what I'm gonna say about creating this tip in is this, or flip up or whatever we're gonna call it. I'm not an expert at this. It's not something I do regularly. I'm not particularly into interactive elements. Now, why am I telling you this? I am not telling you because I feel self-conscious about it or anything like that. That is not why I'm telling you. I actually don't care. It really doesn't make that big of a difference to me if I'm an expert or not. Why I'm telling you this is that everybody starts in different places of ability of things. And this is a perfect example. I don't do these very often. I know how to do them. I know I place the tape, I flip it over, voila, it's there. I wanted to try and see like, oh, can I put the tape down as I place it in where it's gonna end up so that I can see it? No, not really. The tape really just doesn't work out well like that. And so again, the reason I tell you that is not because I feel self-conscious about it, because I don't, but the reason I tell you that is it's okay to be, to not really be sure, to practice, to try, to be a beginner, to be all of those things in your memory keeping. I learned that, yep, despite the fact that I want to see where it's going to end up in the end, I cannot put the tape on any other way. I have to lay the card down and tape it. And if it doesn't work out, I'm just going to peel it up and I'm going to move it. And to answer anybody's questions who's concerned about this, I don't know if the scotch tape I'm using is acid or acid free or safe for my scrapbooks. I actually have no idea. I'm not really honestly that bothered by it. I will have these photos printed in a scrapbook al album somewhere. I It'll be okay is basically what I'm getting at. So. Anyway, hopefully that helps you and helps, even if it's the 55,000th time you've heard that it's okay to be a beginner, it's okay to not know what you're doing, it's okay to start somewhere, hopefully hearing it will help you and that one of these days that will be like, yes, totally, no big deal, no stress about any of these things. I actually didn't know about using scotch tape in my planner until probably a month or two ago when my friend Rachel told me about using Rachel, by the way, the life facilitator, genius she is, about using scotch tape in my planners. Like, oh my gosh, where have I been? Why didn't I think of this? But anyway, I didn't. And luckily, Rachel shared her knowledge with me. And now I can use scotch tape in my planners when I feel like it. I probably won't use it in my scrapbook albums or anything like that. But in my planners or my memory planner, it's cool. It's it's totally fine. No big deal. I'm not really worried if it's acid-free or not. So it's all right. So just remember, be a beginner. Start somewhere. Everybody does. And even somebody like me who has been scrapbooking for 20 years and does this basically daily or five days a week, yeah, I wasn't really sure how, if I could do it the way that I wanted to do it. Okay, you know what I mean. Anyway, so now I'm adding the plans throughout the week. I'm doing the same thing that I have always done. I'm using my Zig Clean Color Dot marker to act as a bullet point because I think that in general, it's just really convenient and easy to use and I like convenient and easy to use. I'm not really into things being difficult. I'm quite a lazy crafter. And it works. I actually hid Monday's activities behind that card. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need these activities hidden. It was really more of a, this is where it fits. And then it turns out that it's behind the card. So that's so cool. Now, Tuesdays, similar, not the same. Now, I am adding a decorative element down at the bottom. And I'm layering some stickers together. The really big geotag, which I think I've told you in the past, I actually absolutely love these big geotags. I think they're so cute. And then layering a couple of word strips on top of it. I just love the way that turns out. I think it's really fun. All right, so now let's continue to add the 
activities, appointments, games. This week we spent in Arizona for USA Baseball Tournament. Some of you may be familiar with that. Most of you probably will not. It is well over 100 degrees every day in Phoenix in late June, early July, and we sat anywhere between three and five hours outside watching baseball, and my son played baseball. So it was a lot, but that is where I got the color palette for this week was from USA Baseball, the navy, the aqua, and the red. Now I could have just gone like a strict red, white, and blue, but I prefer this little play on red, white, and blue with the aqua, navy, and red, and that's where how I settled on that was the inspiration came from the USA in the USA Baseball. And luck has it that I have the coordinating colors in the zig markers. Although, let's be honest, I probably just would have used gray or something like that, even if I did not have those colors. So I am happy I had the red, though, because I really, for whatever reason, I'm not a red person. I don't love red, but I do love this red marker. I, there's something about the way that in my planner it looks, so I really do enjoy using it. All right, so we've got the activities, we've got the plans, we've got the games. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another stamped cluster. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take these July stamps from the Traveler's Notebook Kit and I'm going to create this cluster at the top. First, I am adding that script, both July and the Aqua, and then I'm going to take the larger 7 or 07 and stamp that up at the top as well. See that right there? So cute. And then last but not least, I'm going to take the little summer word and stamp it in navy. I get so many questions about stamping ink. I am here to tell you that my favorite color inks for the versatility of having lots of different beautiful colors are the stamp market by and large. I don't have any problem with bleed through or shadowing with these inks in the planners that I use. I do really like distress oxides. However, there is some inking, there are some bleeding, there is some shadowings, and they're more ink than I need. I don't need all those properties of cool things that you can do with them. Do I have distress oxides? Yep, I think I have like 30. But they're not always the right choice for every project, and they are specific. They they you can do things with them that you can't do or you can do with ordinary ink pads, but much easier. The point is that if you're looking for a beautiful ink that works really well and is very versatile and is a reasonable amount of money, I highly recommend the Stamp Market inks. I will link them up down below. All the ones that I have, I've purchased myself. Nobody sent them to me. I, I just love them. I think they're great and they're really versatile and she has a wide variety of colors. Now, you saw that I added some alphabet stickers. I always love those, and this week is no exception. And then now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna stamp USA using the same aqua ink I've already used, and then I'll use the alphabet stickers, the same ones, to spell out baseball across the bottom. It just overlapped with a little bit of layering. I did speed this part up with the alphabet stickers because quite frankly, who wants to watch me layer alphabet stickers? We all know what that looks like, right? It's not very interesting. I'm not that great at it. <laughs> so let's speed it up. So that's it for me this week. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day.